This poem is entitled, Yes, I Am Black, by Sneha Wasson. I was born with a face less fair skinned. God painted me with charcoal, they said. So by now, you got it. I'm black. A progeny of the slaves, a color of destruction and evil fate. My color became my identity of an atrocious mind too young to understand the world as a vain, glorious land. It never shook me. I never broke. You tactically coveted my sight and admonished me for my color. But how could the color of my skin arbitrate my destiny and rights? Your cold stare froze me at times, but the growing young man within escalated to believe in the heart. You cannot destroy my flesh and soul. I am a thousand galaxies untold. My life won't be a recession of the utter fallacy you created of my character because my color has been constantly underrated. Some hate my color black. Then why do they prefer fantasizing about the Lamborghini in mad black? My color helps you light up the night. Doesn't it work best for romantic candlelight? Don't forget the classy black shades you wear. And doesn't that black tuxedo fit you best? Our blood is the same anyways. Unabashedly, I speak out. We are all humans. Aren't we all the same? Education is what you need. Patience is what we have. It is all the game of one's mindset. I'm a child of God, happy and beautiful in every phase. I will stay forever in my lane, graciously magical in every way. We're all gorgeous, from the top of our froze to the tips of our toes. <laughs> Holding my head high, I will always proclaim, yes, I am black, unique and adoring in every possible way. Thank you.
The week I was in class that summer was the week that Sandra Bland was found in her prison cell, hanging in her prison cell after a minor traffic violation, a missed turn signal. She had been a vocal activist, recording videos and posting them to social media regularly about her own awakening and her fight for liberation. And her mysterious sudden death was ruled a suicide. I don't know what happened in Sandra Bland's cell. It doesn't make sense. But I do know how the system conspires to keep us from facing the truth. How much easier it is to look away when I don't understand something. And however Sandra Bland died, she didn't have to. She was treated as though her life didn't matter. And I felt at that time, and I still feel it to this day, a need to say to someone, anyone, that her life mattered. Honestly, this was the first time I understood how critical it is for white people to say explicitly and publicly that black lives matter. Because it is easy for white people's silence to be interpreted as support for oppression and violence. The Black Lives Matter movement at that point had been around for a couple years, since 2013. It began as a hashtag in a Facebook conversation among three black women. Alicia Garza, Patrice Cullors, and Opal Tometi. After George Zimmerman was acquitted of the murder of Trayvon Martin. A murder Zimmerman confessed to, the shooting of an unarmed black teenager. The Black Lives Matter website defines the movement as an intervention. In a world where black lives are systematically and intentionally targeted for demise, Black Lives Matter is an affirmation of black folks' humanity, their contributions to this society, and their resilience in the face of deadly oppression. Black Lives Matter grew in 2014 in Ferguson when it became the protest chant of those opposing the death of Michael Brown another unarmed black teenager who was shot, but this time by a policeman. And this is where a long history of police brutality against people of color comes into focus. In Ferguson and the greater St. Louis area, there is a complex generational animosity between the police and the people. And Ferguson is where it all finally came to a head. And the institutions meant to serve and protect were challenged. Their inherent racism and white supremacy laid bare. This is when Black Lives Matter began to do on the ground activism. And when it began to receive the criticism that it is anti-police and anti-white. But this activism, the actions that demanded justice for Michael Brown, were born out of love. And Black Lives Matter, at its heart, is still a statement of love. This love story began with these three black women when Alicia Garza wrote a Facebook post titled, A Love Note to Black People. So it started as a love note from a black woman to her community. And in it she wrote, our lives matter. Black lives matter. Underneath the post, her friend Patrice replied with the hashtag, Black Lives Matter. This was her reply of love to her friend. And it makes sense. If your partner, your child or grandchild, your friend came up to you and said, I feel like I don't matter, what would you say? Would you say, Honey, everyone matters. Or would you say, what are you talking about? You matter. You matter to me. As a result of Ferguson, the Black Lives Matter movement developed its identity as it called for a culture change. The phrase became a rallying cry 
one that called everyone to begin to look at the systems of oppression in this country, the white supremacy that is our capitalism, that is the primary ingredient of our democracy, and begin <coughs> to dismantle it. At the UU General Assembly last year, activist Brittany Packnett was invited to give the WEAR lecture, biggest speech of the conference. Ms. Packnett became a leader in the Black Lives Matter movement during Ferguson. And she said, I really just love my people a lot. And I love black children a lot. And I want to see us live. As Unitarian Universalists, we are covenanted together to always choose love. In our relationships with one another, in our activism, in our choices for the planet, always love. This is our sacred bond. As we covenanted with our new members today, we pledged to love, that to be a loving community is our highest value. Some of our songs today came from the civil rights movement, a movement that many in this room participated in. A movement that is the direct ancestor of the Black Lives Matter movement. It is the same story, the same thread of love, a love <coughs> whose goal has always been to build the beloved community. In 1957, Dr. Martin Luther King wrote, the nonviolent resistor must often express his protest through non-cooperation or boycotts. But non-cooperation and boycotts are not ends themselves. They are merely means to awaken a sense of moral shame in our opponent. The end is redemption and reconciliation. The end is the creation of the beloved community. It is this type of spirit and this type of love that can transform opposers into friends. Not eros, romantic love, <coughs> not philia, a sort of reciprocal love between friends. It is agape, which is understanding and goodwill for all. It is an overflowing love which seeks nothing in return. This is the love that may well be the salvation of our civilization. <coughs> Recently, here at KUUF, our Black Lives Matter sign was vandalized. And the word black was cut out from the sign and thrown into the street. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, hate tears down and destroys. Love builds up and unites. So after our service today, we are going to take our newly blessed banner, blessed by the hands of our children, a statement of love that says to every black person in this community and every black person in this congregation, you matter. Now you may notice in your order of service, you don't have to look to verify. Oh, I see it already. <laughs> On the front it says, my sermon title is, A Simple Statement of Love. But on the inside it just says, A Statement of Love. And that's because I changed the title halfway through the writing of my sermon. <laughs> and I took out the word simple. Because I realized, this kind of love is not simple. This kind of love is hard. This kind of love touches you at the soul level and makes you vulnerable. The quality of love that is deep enough to change you, to change your neighbor, your minister, your police, your politicians, the whole system. Cornell West, another one of our recent General Assembly speakers, says that justice is what love looks like in public. This is not a simple kind of love. And it requires us to lean into discomfort and love in equal measure. So what does love look like in public, in this congregation? At GA, Brittany Packnett said, 
Too often, we all reinforce the idea that marginalized people should not expect to be fully and sincerely included in the fabric of our communities. This is reinforced by what we say, by what we don't say, by where we show up, by where we don't show up, by who we defend, by who we punish, by the side on which we stand, by the excuses we make for ourselves, by the excuses we won't allow from others, by the changes we make room for, and by the evolutions we deem too fast or too revolutionary or too soon. We get those indications by the people we elevate and by the people we reject, by the movements we call divisive, by the pace we want to set for the freedom of others, by the individual actions we take to disrupt or uphold the systems that harm us. All of those moments, all of those choices and more, tell marginalized people exactly what we think of their humanity, their dignity, and their daring. Just last week, here in this room, this congregation voted to support a congregational statement against white supremacy. And you voted to support leaning into love with more education, more action, more of the love that is not simple. But it is exactly what we are called to as Unitarian Universalists. Our courage at this moment, with this choice, may well be the salvation of our civilization. And what's more, we aren't making this statement alone. We are together, supported by this faith community, and by our larger Unitarian Universalist faith movement. And remember the summer of 2015, when I read Terror and Triumph? That was only four years ago. So there is a part of me still on that treadmill, walking but making progress. I am still learning. How do I choose love in the face of hate? How do I choose love every time? I have made mistakes on this journey, and I will continue to do so. We will all make mistakes. But love, love will guide us. If you cannot sing like angels, if you cannot speak before thousands, you can give from deep within you. You can change the world with your love.